Pantomation is a specialized video system designed to follow movement, read graphs, and connect live action with synthesized spaces. Generically called tracking chroma key, video effects of this type begin by identifying objects in the field of view by their color. The colored object is isolated from the rest of the picture. This technique is known as chroma key. The chroma keyed object is then analyzed by special circuits connected to a digital mini computer. These circuits calculate the position of the object and send the information to the computer, which analyzes the information to make sure that it is valid. Positional information accepted as valid is stored in the computer listed according to color or time of occurrence. This information is then displayed using video and audio synthesis equipment. This output is what you're seeing. Here we have the um, uh, area that uh, we've decided to manipulate. Billy, want to bring that in? Uh, that's um, that's Henry's um, lip and uh, a little bit of his chin, and uh, it's uh, electrically following the movement of this um, goatee here, a chroma key goatee uh, made out of a bright piece of paper and my lip sync is coming through in the movement of Henry's lips. So then we want to articulate a point, and we feel that they are not being fully appreciated. It's possible to change faces, and uh, just by a little slight of eye, create the correct impression. There are two types of output format. The vector dump format displays the history of movement of a colored object. 128 sequential positions are displayed. The sequence can be slowed down or speeded up under user control. The information can also be processed by analog synthesizers to reshape its appearance. Here we see a bilateral symmetry introduced by creating an inversion of the horizontal information. Here we see an object tracked in flight. Pandemation can track an object like tracking chroma key systems, but it separates the object under study from other motion in the frame, even if it's camera movement. The dancers here almost immediately appreciated pantomation as a technique and quickly adapted to it. The vector dump mode can be used to notate dance or study motion. Here we see a specialized juggling motion by Professor Garbo, which was studied later by one of his clown students. Here, Garbo illustrates the classical trajectories of multiple ball juggling. By changing the rate of playback of the vector dump memory, movement can be recapitulated. This has applications both in teaching and appreciating body movement. Animation was developed at the Electronic Music Studios of the University at Albany as part of its research relating auditory and visual media. Originally conceived as a composer interface for reading formatted musical scores, a television camera scanned a hand-drawn graph, the signal was processed on this interface board, and the information was entered into a mini-computer where the graph was stored as a short list of numbers, containing only the relevant data. Such lists can be used to generate synthetic pictures, produce unique timbres, and control analog synthesizers. The language is both intuitive, since it is graphic and requires no training in computer science, and with precedent. Skyline notation such as this has been used since the twenties by composers, including by George Gershwin. In fact, the ease with which users could access a computer through this interface invited further development of an electronic pantograph for performance art. As currently implemented, the graph is formatted into 32 steps of voltage in the y-axis versus event number in the x-axis. The information is entered into the computer buffer memory used for the vector dump mode. Once entered, the data is used to control an analog music synthesizer. The variable voltage can be used to control parameters of sound, such as pitch, timbre, and tempo. In this way, it functions like a sequential voltage programmer, 
but without a large array of knobs and with the capability of memory for past programs. It also permits programs to be prepared away from the synthesizer, allowing for more efficient studio use and giving composers freedom to set down their ideas with pencil and paper at any time or place. Once the graphic program is prepared, it can be brought to the studio for performance. It can be fine-tuned to the composer's request. The instrument currently enters four graphs in parallel, but modifications of its functions can be realized with software rather than hardware changes. Pantomation has been in use for video, film, and stage productions since New Year's Eve 1977, when this scene was recorded for Tom DeWitt's film Out of Space. Here we see the magnetic robot tossing the hapless astronaut Zero to submission control below decks. Using synthetic sets and costumes, the pantographer can create properties electronically, reducing production costs and allowing real-time interaction with the performance environment. Pantomation gives the actor increased control over the medium. Art is illusion, and performance art is the creation of illusions in real time. On September 14, 1977, the pantograph was first demonstrated in a live theater performance by EBA dancer Heather Harris. Using her blue costume as a key source, the information derived from her position was displayed by the so-called flash program, which displays the data as it is sampled. Taking advantage of the system's ability to calculate velocity, the rate of sampling was controlled by the rate of the dancer's movement, so more information is gathered as the dancer covers more ground. Performed practically without rehearsal, the feedback provided by watching a monitor aided the dancer in her improvisation. The audience was able to watch both the dancer on the stage and the pantomation interpretation of her dance on monitors around the theater. The potential for developing interaction between performers and the video system is an underlying motivation for the invention of pantomation. The engineers and artists at Electronic Body Arts believe that dance and video can be greater than the sum of the arts. Later in the same evening, Basic Fred performed music by moving a green object in front of the camera. The audience saw him alone on the stage. The vibrating strings that you see were added into his televised image. In 1979, the EBA Pantomation Studio at the Video Synthesis Laboratory of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute was open to visiting artists such as filmmaker Hilary Harris seen here working on his tape Zons for the WNET TV lab. Composer Joel Chatterby prepared a work using the pantograph as an input to his music computer. <laughs> Here we see the mime, Mike Bird, performing his skit, Underwater Adventure, with the pantograph used to heighten the illusions he creates by mime. These and other artists have expressed strong interest in continued access to pantomation, and a workshop program for them has received funding from the National Endowment for the Arts. <coughs> Supporting the Pantograph Studio is not an easy task for EBA, but as innovators in an exciting new area of dance video, we expect to keep our doors open for some time.